Okay, a little thing on caseware. So what is caseware, caseware, case view, all this stuff? Um, I did. A, I guess I'll just show it right now. Okay, when I first entered the accounting profession back in uh, 96, the program that everybody everybody seemed to be using, the, the latest program was called ATB Write-Up. It was made an ATB4, or Accountant's Trial Balance and Accountant's Trial Balance Write-Up. Both of them had write-up capabilities. The only difference between the two programs that I've seen, and I, I know how to use those pretty damn well, um, is that ATB Write-Up would allow you to do monthly reports whereas ATB would only let you do annual reports but they still would handle divisions very well and they still would handle um, write up although not the prettiest printouts but still probably acceptable for most accountants uh, for the most part they're just using Word to this day most people in Excel and I'll try to explain where things go wrong basically um, I'm not going to get into names of of, of anybody, but um, just over the course of my work, and I, I'm <clears throat> right now I'm as a part of what I'm doing to create our own financials. I'm reconstructing, trying to figure out, you know, what the last we just took over an audit, so I'm trying to figure out what what did the last auditor do to get these balances? You know, what accounts did they include in these groups to come up with, say, cash or this, that, and the other thing, and you know, to know. You know how things worked out, the statement of cash flows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I know they used Excel on this. And the reason why I know they used Excel is because, well, one of their columns don't foot. And they're off by pre ninety some $90,000 on one of the consolidations. And it ends up they expensed some of the accounts payable. <laughs> some of the inner funds, they just decided to expense it. And they, and they they didn't but the expense by ex, when they expensed it they didn't put it on the the income statement they decided or didn't decide they <coughs> haphazardly or someone decided to plug a number and didn't and didn't realize what they're doing or was sick of having the boss yell at them that the financials had to go out and uh, so there's a whole basically an accounting debits have to equal credits right and if you're missing some debits or some credits, you can always, you know, to make a, a, a regular balance sheet look right, all you got to do is just say that you started the beginning of the year with net assets that were more than what you really had or less than what you really had, but the exact amount or number of the, of the missing amounts, and lo and behold, when you add profit to the beginning net assets, the ending net assets ties to the balance sheet. And everything looks like it works, except one of the pages don't flip. Okay, well, caseware and case view and the linking of and not using Excel, which is this is my biggest criticism of the Journal of Accountancy right now, is that the only real tips they have in the Journal of Accountancy are on using Word and Excel. And although a lot of accountants seem to use Word and Excel, the end of making mistakes on their work because they use Word and Excel. They're not using an integrated system of, of, of well, what do I mean by that? It sounds like I'm just talking out of my ass, but if you can have, okay, let me give you an example. What happens when we um, do our, we have to produce something called the balance sheet. Basically on a balance sheet you have a, you know, what, you owe, what you own minus what you owe is what you're worth. And then on the other end of that, you have an income statement. And if you think about it, debits equaling credits. You know, if you have, you know, thousand bucks of profit for the year, you start out with your cash of hundred bucks. It goes up to one thousand one hundred dollars. Then, you know, your cash will be if you had a profit on a pure cash basis of thousand dollars over a year. You started the year with thousand, a hundred bucks of cash. You'll have eleven hundred at the end of the year. So where you know it's always going to be your equity is always going to be your assets minus your liabilities, but it gets you know as more accounts get added, it's easier for the end user using Excel to to lose light of that fact. 
and Excel isn't going to do a conditional situation where it's going to say, okay, for one box, both, add both these columns down and these columns sideways. Now, why am I saying sideways? Well, in not-for-profit accounting, we have three forms of net assets. They are unrestricted, temporarily restricted, and permanently restricted. And I'm just going to talk about the classical pre-rule change um, completely unclear parameters we're working with now, but the clear parameters were before was that um, if a donor came by and said, okay, you have to use this $10,000 that I'm donating to you to do uh, to repair that sidewall over there that's got the busted hole in it where the homeless people are sleeping in the cold. You have to fix that. Okay, that was called restricted, but that's temporarily restricted because because the restriction could expire with either the passage of time or the fulfilling of a promise. Okay, so it's not it's money is not available for normal operations. Can you reimburse me for this cat gas? I went over and delivered the food. No, hey, you know that 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 money that restricted money isn't available in theory for, for that those those expenses. Okay, understand that. So now we have three on our balance sheets for not for profits. We typically have most part, most commonly two columns. Um, you can present it all in one column, but it doesn't. It, it leaves it leaves some some detail to the end user out. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, and it, okay, and then once those funds are released from restriction, it moves over from one column to the next by having a negative in this first column and a positive in the second column and those the negative plus the positive equals zero and so your net assets are reduced by that negative and their operating asset net assets are increased by the negative and there's no such thing as a temporarily restricted expense under the old rules it was just if you had an expense it was a part of operations but you simultaneously when you have that expense that fills the promise you made to the donor when they restricted their contribution that was um, reflected by net assets released from restriction okay you probably still would be an operating cost for anything you do that's within your not-for-profit organization uh, stated purpose you can't restrict funds for operations they're that way anyway. <laughs> I restrict these funds for operations. <laughs> it's what they are anyway. So anyway, that's why unrestricted is normally called operations. So let's get back to caseware uh, and case view. What caseware does in general is, with, with a few exceptions, and there's, there's one bug in, in caseware that I don't like. If you add a new account and you have divisions and subdivisions set up, and I'll get into that, what those are, then um, you add a new account if you have, already have those things set up. Unless you go and click on the report tab and you put in the, uh, the division number and the subdivision number in there, it's not going to show up on some of your reports and you'll be out of balance. And you're going to wonder why. Why is that out of balance? <laughs> Luckily, I figured that out fairly early, and so we were able to continue with case where otherwise I would have concluded it was a piece of crap. But it's not. It's a very powerful tool. So what you do in case where, and this, and what you did in uh, the accountant's trial balance, with one exception, with one exception that's different, it was very useful in accountant's trial balance. In accountant's trial balance, you would say all the account numbers up to say three, 